always cover the the blade of your tomahawk. I know it's a it's a nuisance to have to uncover it, but uh, I wrap mine in leather. Never carry a tomahawk in your belt unless you've got the blade wrapped or covered in some way. It's just too easily to to fall. Put your hand out and fall on your hand with your tomahawk in your belt and you'll cut your hand off. It's happened. Okay. Need a good peg. Let's see if this one will do. No need to use a knife for this, just your tomahawk will do. Make sure you've got a, a round pole tomahawk. Uh, a lot of people like to get a fancy tomahawk, get a hammer pole, uh, but they're no good for banging pegs in, they're just not practical. Uh, so just get yourself a nice plain round pole tomahawk and it'll do everything you need it to do. Okay, you need some firm ground as close to this as we can get it. Okay. Measure the snare. See if it'll reach that tree. Okay. We don't want it going around that tree. We can help it. So we'll see if we can tie it off here. Makes it rather short. We don't want the rabbit going around that tree. Let's just tie a single knot now. Leather's pretty good. I have a leather, leather on the end of this snare. Leather's pretty good because it grips straight away with a simple knot. Okay, we open the snare out. You want this snare set two to three fingers off the ground. Two fingers is okay for a rabbit. Three fingers for a hare. We're after a rabbit, so we want it two fingers off the bottom of the ground, off the ground level. We just want this snare to hang in there. That's all we want it to do. Sometimes you might have to manipulate it a little bit just to get it to hang where you want it. And that perfect. It's hanging just right. Two fingers off the ground. Beautiful. Take another turn around here. Just to make sure. Now yeah, that's moved it again, so we have to go back. And check it again. Let's bring it a bit more. Yeah, 
might be a bit fiddly. Once you get used to it, it doesn't take long. Okay, there we are. We're back to two fingers off the ground again. That sits just right. Pretty simple. Okay, there you can see the peg. With the leather tied around it. it goes down here. See that snare just in there and the bottom of it. It's in the shadow there of it, but it's two fingers width off the ground. Simple as that. Now don't check your chair, your snares too early in the morning. Because it's early in the morning when the rabbits come out. The snare could catch it coming out or going in. Don't forget if it's a warren, there are other holes around. You can set snares on those two if you like, or you can just set it on the one that seems to be mostly used. Same thing at night. They'll, uh, they'll probably be back in their burrows just before dark. Um, they'll be in there during the day unless it's very overcast and they're very hungry. So they'll be coming out about in the afternoon, depending on what the weather's doing, say about four o'clock. Um, this is the same for most animals. They'll lie up in the day, up in the woods. And, uh, and of course the rabbits will be down their burrow. Then as the day draws on and it gets later in the afternoon, then they'll start to come out to feed. So uh, it gives you some idea of the times you need to come and set your trap line. Um, come and set them, come and check them around each morning. And uh, just leave it long enough so that they've had time to get out and feed and go back in again. And uh, you should be right. Um, because these snares don't actually strangle the animal, there's no need to check the snares day and night. Um, because the rabbit should be safe down in its burrow, just waiting for you to come along in the morning. Okay, that's all I have to say on rabbit snaring in burrows. See you later, down the trail.